In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a product carousel just like this over here using Elementor and the Elementor Loop Carousel widget. Let's get started. Do you want to build professional grade websites with ease? Join my Elementor Pro Bootcamp and unlock the full potential of the page builder. Learn to create stunning websites, maximizing Elementor Pro's dynamic and advanced features in no time. With self-paced learning, lifetime course updates, and unlimited email support, you'll never get stuck without any hope. Enroll now and start building your dream website with Elementor Pro. Follow the link on the screen or simply visit bootcamp.gotechug.com. So welcome back to the channel, Hamza here, your host as usual. Now in the previous video, I showed you how to create a carousel slider using the Elementor Loop Carousel. And if you didn't see that video or you haven't watched that video, please check out the link right down in the description of this video. But in this video, I want to show you how to use the Elementor Loop Carousel widget to create a product carousel, which has been kind of a hassle in Elementor because if you watched my video about creating an e-commerce website using the Elementor page builder, you realize that I had to use a separate plugin or a third party plugin to create this product carousel. And you know, this was a free widget from the premium add-ons for Elementor. But now with a new update in Elementor 3.11, we are able to create a product carousel using the loop carousel widget just like this over here. And in this video, that is what we are going to cover. Now, the beauty about this is that we are going to be eliminating one plugin again from our website. And this will be the premium add-ons for Elementor. Of course, it's an awesome plugin, but if Elementor is giving us the power to create a certain section using inbuilt widgets, then we don't need that party add-ons. I guess you get what I mean in this case. But before we actually get started, I want you to spot some differences um, that I could not really achieve by using the Elementor Loop Carous. And this is to do with the design of the card of the product in this case that helps me to create the listing as you can see here the product carousel we created using the premium add-ons for elementor we had the option to swap an image on hover now when i built my new carousel using the new elementor loop carousel widget i was not able to have the option to swap the images on hover so what i had to simply do was to change the color of the image on hover because i'm not able to swap these images now, the other thing is that when I styled up my price to match exactly how it is over right here, I could not really get that. For some reason, Elementor was picking up another style from my website, and I'm still wondering why it is pointing to another style than what I actually set up, just like I had done earlier here. But more to that in the video. So I'm going to come back here to my pages, and I'll open up one of the pages that I want to add this product carousel with Elementor. And by the way, to be able to create the product carousel with Elementor, you should be having Elementor Pro. And if you don't have Elementor Pro, kindly use my affiliate link right down in the description of this video. That way Elementor gives me a small commission without an extra charge to you. And then I'm able to be making more videos just like this on the channel. So I'm going to come down below here where there is our product carousel. And as you can see that here, I use a product carousel widget from the premium add-ons for Elementor, which is called Woo products. So I am going to duplicate this container. So here is a duplicated container. I'm going to delete this product carousel widget from the premium add-ons for Elementor. And now I'm going to take advantage of the new Elementor loop carousel widget. So come to elements, look up for loop carousel widget or loop carousel, drag it into the editor. Now here is where I can start now creating my template for the product carousel. And to do that, I have to use the loop item settings to create a single card that is going to create a loop for my listing right over here. So to start with, I am going to say create a template. So right over here, I'm able to create the listing item template. So what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm going to come here to the settings. So I'm going to name this as a product loop item and i'm going to change the preview from posts to product because we want to have a preview of one of the products from uh, from our website and the query we can still change this from the source type of posts to the source type of products i am going to apply all right so now when you look over right here on our product carousel 
you realize that we have like a cell ribbon, we have the product image, then we have, in fact, this is, you know, a featured image of the product, then the title, then the category, then the price, and then the add to cut button. So what we are going to do right here, I'm going to come to my editor. I'm going to say, add a container. It's going to run in the vertical direction or the column direction in this case. And now I'm going to add my product or the image. So the featured image in this case. And since we already set up that we want to have a preview from the products, that's why you see that we automatically get a featured image of the product. If we were using the preview setting of the post, then we would have a featured image from one of the posts. We will come back here to our widgets and then we will look up for, you know, a title widget or a heading widget. And again, we will add another heading widget. But in this case, I'll simply duplicate this heading widget. The first one is going to be our sales ribbon. So I'll add cell as text. And the next one is going to be our product title. So I'm going to come here to the title widget dynamic tags. Then scroll down below here to WooCommerce. So WooCommerce. And then I'll set it as the product title. Great. Now come back here to the widgets. We are going to look up for the product tags. So, or the product category. And as you see right over here, we have the product meta. And this product meta is not really going to give us what we want. But I can show you what this is. So this over here is going to give us, you know, the inline style. So here I can change to have it like stacked and it's going to give us the SKU number of the product and the category, but that's not what I want in this case. So I'm going to delete this and I'm going to come back here and grab another heading widget. And in this case, I am going to change this heading widget to the product category. So come back here to WooCommerce and come to product terms and come here to the range icon, select the taxonomy as the product tag and the separator is going to be a comma in case it belongs to more than one category. And under advanced, there is a text before, which in this case is showing category, but we don't want to show that. I'm going to delete that completely and now we have simply the product category should be displaying now when you look over here we are remaining with the price and the button so come back here widgets we are going to look up for the product uh, add to cart so there are two add to cart buttons there's a custom one and a pre-designed add to cart button in this case so let's look into the difference between these two buttons now when i use this button you see that it's giving me this layout then i can as well switch to maybe start or i can use auto but i don't want to add the quantity buttons in this case that's why instead of using this already pre-designed button or add to cut button i want to use the custom button and say product button so in this case i'll use the custom woocommerce button so woocommerce add to cut button, drag it into our layout. In this case, now we have the option to enable or disable the quantity buttons, just like you see over here. So I don't want to show those buttons. I want to only have the add to cut button and, you know, under layout, I can choose to have inline stacked or whatever once and this is only helpful if you have the quantity buttons enabled. Okay, now it's time to style up our widgets within our loop item. I'll start with our featured image. So I'll select this image. Remember that we are not able to swap this image on hover just like it was when we use the premium add-ons for Elementor product carousel. But we are going to simply make a small change whereby the image changes the color on hover. So what I'm going to do is select the featured image, come to style. I'm going to come here to the CSS filters. On hover, I'll change the brightness to 85. Now, when I hover over our image, it changes the brightness, but you can go ahead and make different changes the way you want. I'll come and select our product title under style. 
we are going to set the color we will leave the color on the default which is the main color so under typography we will set that to be our title or head and that's it all for now now let's go to our category so under style typography we're going to use this as body text and don't forget that we want everything here to be centered aligned so aligned in the center and the html tag for the category is going to be h2 even for the price is going to be h2 it's only for the product title that is going to be h1 so back here content html tag we want this to be h1 because it has priority in this case so and i want it to be centered we are going to talk about this just in a while now oh wait we forgot to add the product price so come here look up for the price widget so with the widget selected i'm going to align to the center and we have two prices we have the regular price and the sell price option so we want that the sell price is a little bit bold so we are going to come here to typography and we're going to change the weight to 700 so here it will appear bold but already it's using the default font style that we set up as our global style so we don't have to make any changes in the font face just like you saw for all the other widgets that we have set up now let's go and do styling for our button so select the button we don't want to show the quantity buttons and under the button style we can change you know we can make changes to the text instead of add to cart you can change that to something else and we can align the button in the middle which is what we want change we can as well change the button size we can change the icon and place it either before or after and under layout we can choose inline style stacked or auto this works only when you have the quantity buttons displaying now let's go to the style so under typography we are going to change this to be our primary typeface and on normal the text color is going to be white and the background color is going to be one of our global colors which is a secondary color we don't have a border radius let's go to the hover options we want to set the text color to be our black color and the background color is going to be our accent color something like that like i've already said we don't want to have a border radius and as well we don't want to have a border color so border type none border radius zero so we have something like this but we want our button to be a little bit wider so under padding i'll unlink the values top and bottom is going to be seven and right and left i'll make it 35 padding now two more things we are going to work on the positioning of our button and also the positioning of our cell ribbon so first things first i'll select my price widget come to advanced and under margin i'm going to add a negative margin at the bottom so that i can pull up my add to cut button maybe a 20 would look good and now let me go to my sales ribbon have it selected under style text color is going to be our accent color and then the typography is going to actually be our primary typography now let's go to advanced we are going to add a background color which is going to be our main color and still under advanced we're going to set this to align to self to the left now we're going to add some padding so we will add a padding of seven both top bottom left and right now we want to position this cell ribbon right at the top over here of the product we are going to come down below here to position we'll set to absolute positioning and then i am going to set this to be two pixels that is on the offset now i am going to select the container holding all our products like this and i'm going to come back here to advanced and i'll remove the padding on the container so we have now our ribbon just at the edge of our product image right at the top there for now all looks good but i want to reduce the gap between the elements with our container still selected i'm going to come to layout gap between elements i'm going to make this 10 something like this looks good now unless something is missing and i have not noticed it but our loop item looks good now when i say update this will save our loop template that we just created and then we'll go back to our loop carousel 
point to this template and then we'll be able to display products in a loop grid so now i'll say back save and back this option takes me back to our home page uh, where we are creating our product loop yep it already showing up now there it is so we have to make some changes looks like we pulled up so much of the button to go up and also looks like all products are having the cell ribbon so we have to go back and make changes to that so go back to edit template so inside our template editor first of all i'm going to select our price here and i'm going to come here to our margin settings i'm going to remove i'll make it like a 10 only i think that looks okay uh, but i think i'll just make it a zero so we don't have to add a negative margin because here it looks a little bit better than it was looking in the preview so now i'm going to select our product ribbon and right here i'm going to come to content instead of us using the title text in here we are going to dynamically reference this to products that are on sale from woocommerce so to do that with our title we just selected come to dynamic tags scroll down below here to woocommerce come to product sale option and under the range icon we are going to set the text to be sell now this is being pulled in dynamically and it will only display a sell ribbon on products that are on a sell not like how it has been displaying on all products that are from woocommerce so i'll update and now i'll say save and back and here we are now we have all the products are showing up in the carousel. so but in this container we only want to display discounted products now this is where the loop carousel widget from elementor comes into play because it enables us to filter and to query and and to set how many products will appear in our carousel slider how you can navigate the carousel slider and all that stuff so we are now going to select our loop carousel have it selected and i'm going to come here of course we chose that a template type is going to be for products that's why we have products in the preview and then we are using the product loop template that we just created together the number of slides that are going to show up right over here we are going to set that to blank meaning that all the products that are on sale will display in the carousel now the slides to display on a desktop this will be three but we can as well change that on mobile and slide on scroll so we only want one product to slide and yes we have the eco height feature then under query this is very important instead of showing the latest products in our slider we want to show the products that are on sale great there it shows up now we can as well exclude by term in this case if you want that we want to only show products that are on sale but in a certain category that is also possible now in the loop carousel widget this i like then uh under settings okay in this case i'm not going to add any exclusions but now let's go down below here under settings you can set up how to interact with your slide whether autoplay you can set up the speed pause on hover pause on interaction you can enable all those features right here and also the direction of the slide now under the navigation we can set up how these navigation arrows are looking like or we can even change the navigation arrows so under pagination we can change how to navigate our slides so instead of using dots we can say fraction we can say progress i'll leave them as dots in this case now let's go to style so gap between slides is going to remain 10 but if you change that to like a 30 that's how it would look like so 10 looks good for me under navigation we want to change the icon sizes this here we want to change that to a 30 and the color is going to be our secondary color and on hover we want to change that to a black color and then the position of our arrows are going to be outside the color so like this so under pagination we want to change the size of our dots to a 30 as well and for the color we want to leave this to be 
you know the default colors that are already set but you can go ahead and set that for the normal and also the for the hover color option we want the position of our dots to be outside the slider and that's it for now okay now i want to preview these settings on a mobile device to see how our slider looks like here shows up our slider first of all let's start with the dots so we want to reduce the size of the dots on the mobile to be a little bit smaller maybe a 15 would look good so there is our product ribbon there is our product image our navigation arrows the product title is a little bit big so maybe we can make some changes to that the price looks good and the category looks good update so i'll go back to the desktop version i am going to come and say edit template so i'll select my title and we are going to reduce the size of this title on the mobile device so typography uh, size on mobile we want to set this to be like maybe a 20 would look good and also the line height so that can be like a 1.5 maybe a 1.2 looks good for me and that's all for now when i observe this ribbon over here it's a little bit old so i want to position it exactly at the edge of the image i'll come here and select my heading widget that is holding our ribbon under advanced we want to move that let me see let me make it zero exactly now it is at the complete top left hand side of our product list item it's good now what i'm going to do is update come to our desktop device the other thing that i had mentioned earlier is the fact that when you look at the style of this product price and the style of this product price they're actually using the same style but for some reason elementor is applying a different style over right here so i'm wondering where it's pulling that style from so if you have an idea why that is happening just let me know down in the comment box of this video in this case i chose to use a smaller font face but in our new design i decided that i have a bigger font face for the product title and a smaller font size or oh, and a smaller font face for the product category so once i'm done creating my new product carousel i can come back over here and now delete this other carousel that i had to create using a third party add-on i'll hit update and then we can go to preview this page there we go we have our product carousel widget showing up our products from the cell category on our website so in this case if i say add to cart now i have one product here in the cart so i can say preview the product then I can go straight to the checkout or simply go and view the cart. There we are at the checkout page with our product here. And then your client will be able to check out and have their order placed on your website. Anyway, in a nutshell, thank you so much for watching this video. I'm so happy that now we have this possibility to create carousel sliders within Elementor using this carousel widget from Elementor and Elementor Pro. In case you have any questions or comments, let me know down in the comment box of this video. Otherwise, have a good time and goodbye.